Yo, it's the Freedom Fiends live Sunday call-in show. How y'all doing today? I am Nima Vidati. Over you, on the other end of the internet interwebs for me is Michael W. Dean. How you doing, Michael? Good. You are the right honorable Nima Vidati, and I am Sir Michael Wareham Dean. <laughs> are we giving ourselves status titles now? Is that the case? Yeah. I actually I thought we up- were I thought we were co-chief anarchy officers. <laughs> well, I was looking up this thing. I was looking up the right to keep and bear arms. In England, there's something called the right to bear arms, which has nothing to do with weapons. It's for coats of arms, and it's an ex- <laughs> it's an exclusive right, not an inclusive right. It basically means you have to be, you know, born into fancy blood before you uh-huh. can bear ha- bear your coat of arms. And it goes back wow. to before they had to write down that you know, back when only only yeah, when peasants couldn't have a sword. Wow! Wow! So, oh, wait, what's please. the what's the etymology of that? Why is it called a coat of arms? Is that what they put on their weapons and shields as they murdered other people? Yeah, yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. leave it to the British to to have the right to keep and bear the right to bear arms. Mean uh, only fancy people can have uh, <laughs> a shield, basically. Right. Right. Well, that's the root of the problem of statism, isn't it? Anyway, is that only the approved people get to do certain things? Like only the approved people can decide which people get guns or not. Yeah. So speaking of statism, first of all, I'm still calling it square, but I'm now I'm calling it boring. Like, man, that is so boring. <laughs> I think that's a worse thing that you can say to some bureaucrat. You're so boring. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's it has its place. The only thing I worry about is um, usually the statists want people to think of politics and economics as boring so they, don't so that pay they won't pay attention to it yeah they'll be like yeah. oh well that's for ben bernanke to decide or or people on my facebook saying things like i don't know what has to happen that's for the folks in washington dc to decide but something needs to happen about these guns and that's just about the worst thing you can think is oh well that's out of my league that's out of my field of expertise i shouldn't be concerned with what what they're doing over there i trust them um that's did a very you, bad sentiment did you know that the state basically has the right to um keep you alive and harvest your organs while your heart's still breathing beating and your lungs are breathing Ugh, really this is that like an organ donor thing yeah i was reading about organ donors um in the united states it's either opt in and it's when you get your driver's license you know i think mm, you might you course. might have to opt out you might have to check a box i dj and i have opted out and uh you can also um, if someone doesn't specify or they don't have a driver's license or something, the immediate family can give their organs away. But the thing I found out, okay, they can harvest organs like after you're completely dead, after your brain dies and your heart stops beating, but they have a uh-huh. better chance of having successful transplants if they do what's called uh, a, a beating heart cadaver, which is basically once uh. your brain dies, they put you on a ventilator and uh, machines to keep your heart beating and your lungs breathing, and they they start cutting into you and pulling stuff out of you while you're still alive, basically. And that's how they wow. do it in America and most places. And in a lot of countries in Europe, you can't opt out. You are born opting in. So the state owns the right to keep you alive right. and carve into you and take stuff out. And it's interesting when you read the Wikipedia article on organ donation and mandated choice, it says, see also nudge book. That's the Cass Sunstein book. Um, Cass Ah. Sunstein is a big advocate of not letting anyone opt out. Basically, the state owns you and owns the right to cut into you while your heart's still beating. Wow, That's scary, man. I mean, it's completely scary, and, and a great example of the, why the principle of self ownership is so important is if you, yeah. you have some collective owning you, or believe there's some kind of social contract where they have an ownership right to your body and yourself, then it leads to things like this. It leads to them pulling your guts out while your body's still alive, literally, so they can give vulture, it to somebody else. Vulture vampiristic is that man? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's complete. Yeah, parasitical. Yeah, that's the word, right? Yeah. <laughs> they're literally taking yeah. the organs from you. Yes. While while your heart is still beating. Dick Cheney Ugh. needs a new heart. He uh <laughs> he had a heart attack while shooting his lawyer. Of course. Uh, well, and of and, course the um the other thing about organ donation is it's not a market thing at all. Uh, yeah. I mean there's no you can't buy and sell organs, you can't <laughs> decide who would get your organs. It's all this collective Soviet style. And that's supposed of to make it that's supposed go. to make it it's supposed to make it fairer to like where, you know, Poor people can't be nudged economically into selling. But, you know, I mean, people can live with one kidney. You know, there are, and one lung. There are uh, organs that you have duplicates of that if someone offers you enough money, you should be able to sell them. Yeah, 
Yeah, well, I, I, I agree completely. I mean, it's it's for the market to sort out. And yeah, there might be some poor people who maybe can't afford an organ, but uh, there's no just that's no justification for creating some kind of positive right to somebody else's organs. And you can't like will your organ to a particular person. Like, let's say you had a, lo- a beloved uncle who, uh, mm-hmm. you know, needed a heart transplant and you were healthy and you were in a car accident. Your, your your heart wouldn't go to him. It'd go to the next person on the list, and he's number hundred thousand on the list. And uh, right. yeah, and you know, actually, I think that the the uh, there's been talk of that the, the it incentivizes doctors declaring death before they really should. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a or great pulling the plug, consequence. you know, pulling not the a plug. great unintended consequence, <laughs> but it's great for you to point a that huge, unintended great, consequence great out. in a big way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I have a friend, um, who's kind of a hopeless romantic. This is kind of a tangent, but it's kind of funny. He was, he says he's an organ donor, but he, he put some kind of caveat in there. I don't know if, it, if it's a real thing that he can do this, but he said, except for my eyes. And I said, why? And he's like, because I only have eyes for Samantha. Aww. And I like literally threw up a little bit. <laughs> like really? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it sounds kind of awe, but this was like a girl that he well, was stalking. Well, there's an there's an there's an oatmeal uh cartoon of like someone who loves someone so much that he says, "After you die, I want to take your eyes out and mount them on a stuffed panther and put them in my bedroom <laughs> to stare at them into eternity." <laughs> so moving right along. Moving right along from organs and ripping them out. Well, yeah. How do we follow that, Michael? <laughs> well, um, we have a couple more people for the Worm Wrangler Golden Floppy Disk of Redemption list. Voslav ah. has set up a third t- torrent seating box Yay. in in the Prague Republic. I want to thank okay. him for that. That is great. Now we have three seed boxes. I mean, if you're torrenting, it's going to go so damn fast. And then Chandler Yay. St. Pierre gave us a donation. And we have new buttons. They say state speech is hate speech. Now, here's the thing. And they're in gold and black and cap colors. Here's the thing. I've got seven of them. And that's it. And it may be all I ever make. So the next seven people that order the four button pack of Fiends buttons will get a fifth button free that says state speech is, is hate speech. And it may be the <sighs> only people that ever get them. So yes. go on our site, click on the button link at the top and order them now. Very limited. Go ahead and get get that if you can, because that's going to be a collector's item. State speech is hate speech. Although I guess not. I guess if it got really popular, we'd put some more out. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is at some point. It depends. I want to incentivize people by threatening that there may never be any more of these, but (laughs) there probably will be at some point. We'll see. We'll see. So I got some good collectivism. Um, Let's see. Well, auto 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 statist corrected mishaps. Lou pointed out that minarchist. Uh, spell check doesn't know it and it suggests monarchist. Huh. There's such okay. a pattern here, man. It's so weird. It's like, really, are they conspiring against us? Well, I know it always puts red underlines over, under statist when I type that out. Or I guess it doesn't now. It has before for me. It I does what for statist? It. Uh, it says it's wrong. Like it gives you a little red. Well, red what thing. does it suggest? Something like wonderful human being? Uh, hold on. I'm checking into it now. Uh, so status, it looks like if it's capitalized, it does not consider it incorrect. If it is not capitalized, it underlines it in red. But uh, it's not giving me any suggestions. So, so uh, I was reading the Prairie Pravda the other day, the Casper Star Tribune. Uh, I was at the doctor's office, and there's nothing uh. to read. <laughs> So, yeah, well, um, I was uh, speaking of that. I was at the the DMV the other day, and there was like that little one of those little free papers that small towns put out. They, they had Cass Sunstein's book Nudge <laughs> sitting there for you <laughs> well, to read. I, I, my wife hands me one. and I'm like, "What the fuck is this? I've got a phone. I just can read anything in the world I want to on my phone now." I was like, "Wow, this, <laughs> yeah. this is the death knell for all print media, isn't it? Yeah. What, what, why the hell are you going to hand me? A I know print media is basically office? something you read when you're trapped and there's nothing else. Right, but who's they should put? Anymore, they should put a big. Well, they should put a big fair a cage in government buildings like you know, in, the, <laughs> in the walls so you can't use your your chrome robot turd to listen to the feelings you, you have to and then they should just put copies of nudge by Cass sunstein there <laughs> yeah I, i'm sure they would want to do that but um we can go ahead and continue with uh, real quick what real quick the other no, thing no 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 save, save it for this one's so short and good there was an ad in there from the local government saying, don't put grease down your drain. And I'm like, my mother taught me that when I was five. Why do we need to spend government money to tell us something like that? Because I guess they want to be our parents, man. More oh, coming totally back. More. Mm-hmm. More soon. 
Did your world collapse when Ron Paul didn't win? Don't keep hoping for some great man to fix government through government. Complete your evolution today to full-on anarcho-capitalist. Reward your brain with the freedom fiends and quit breaking your heart with some politician. While the libertarians argue, But who would build the roads? The freedom fiends have already built the roads and moved on to making the great media content of the libertarian paradise. Freedomfiends.com That's freedomfiends.com A science fiction comic adventure from Big Head Press Quantum Vibe It's year 2523 There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed With brain implants and artificial gravity A scientific genius and his clever assistant Set out on an adventure through the solar system On a secret mission to find the key To access new frontiers and save liberty Quantum Vibe There's a robot girl and zany creatures Made with genetically engineered features And corporate villains crave the opportunity To steal a profit from Mother's ingenuity A scientific genius and his clever assistant Set out on an adventure through the solar system On a secret mission to find the key To access new frontiers and save liberty Quantum Vibe Hello, the right Yo. Honorable Nima Vidati. How are you? I'm doing excellent, Mr. Sir Wareham Fiend. <laughs> Sir Michael Wareham Fiend. Fiend. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to have to leave uh, early today. I'm going to leave the last half hour to you because I have to go to the local uh, COINTELPRO office and give my report for the month. <laughs> okay, okay. Speaking of which, um, we actually had a federal agent call my wife, uh, I think it was the day before yesterday, Calls the wife and is like, hi, I'm in South Austin right now. I, I have to compile um, a background check on this, uh, a friend of yours. I, I need to meet at your house for an interview. Are really? you home? Yeah, he, he pitched it like that. Not were like, you, were are you, the, do you have time? What's a good time for you? He pitched it like, I am here right now. I'm here to <laughs> harvest your organs. Are you home? <laughs> yeah, and um, my wife was like, aren't you proud of me? Because I didn't talk to her until after the call. She were was you? like, I told, him, I told him, no, I'm not going home. I'm out and about and I'm doing things. And I have a busy schedule ahead of me. Were so you I, the I, friend? Were you the friend that? No, she no, no. It's a, it's a, um, a friend of hers who went to, um, I think the Air Force Academy, and then she was in some kind of chemical weapons buying program, and she's probably doing something more secret and violent. Basically, than that doing I, I something know. that they'd put they'd put a citizen in prison for life for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't want to judge too much because I don't know the details. It could be something peaceful, but uh, yeah, it doesn't that is, sound like it. That is so boring. It's actually kind of interesting, so but it's, it is it's so boring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But but I mean, seriously, that's the way they operate. Like, federal agent just comes to your neighborhood and is like, "Hey, come home. I got to talk to you." No, no, yeah. I have plans. Like, we, well, we remember, did have plans. Like, we had a busy day of doing crap. And do you remember those gonna... letters I was getting from the University of Colorado? Like, why haven't you answered our survey? You haven't answered our survey. You must answer our survey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They act like we owe them something. I know. Because they do so many things for us. Yeah, things Shit. we didn't ask them to do. Yeah. They're, so they're, the government is like that bum that sits at the traffic light and goes and washes your windows without <laughs> you asking and then gets mad when you don't give them a dollar. That is awesome. Like, no, I didn't I didn't ask you to, to wash my window, bum. Go away. That is that is awesome. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, look at this park we made for you. Now you have to pay for it, even if you don't ever visit it. Even if you're an agoraphobe and can't go out in public. Yeah. Like me. No, I'm going out in public. I'm going to uh, file my COINTELPRO reports in an hour. hour Is that public? Do they minutes. do it in like the public square and announce all the COINTELPRO findings publicly? And then they have a public hanging like in 1984? <laughs> yeah, we meet in a parking lot and whisper. <laughs> you whisper. You whisper uh, chants against Goldstein and then you praise Big Brother. I, B, turn, in, B, I, turn, in B, I turn in my neighbors for pouring grease down their drain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I actually watched um the eighties version of nineteen eighty four uh last night oh, good. on Netflix on Netflix. I reviewed yeah. that on here once. What'd you think? Yeah, I think we talked about it before. I, I didn't remember having seen it, but after watching it, I couldn't tell if I had seen the movie before. Because it's so if, similar in plot if, to the yeah, the or if I was one. just remember if I was just remembering the book or or what the case was. But um, uh, some of the things that struck me newly at the time was um was the importance 
and the parallels of the telescreen and n- modern news. News, media. yeah. For, for instance, he's he's talking to a member of the inner party, and the inner party asks him, you know, something about the good troops on the Malabar front or the African front or something. And um, mm, Winston, Malabars. you know, the main character, his first, his immediate answer without thinking is, I, I follow the news. Like, it's a really important thing to show that you, you have yeah. loyalty to the like, party. <laughs> um and then, but but he's not. He's completely disinterested. But then at the end, you know, because in the plot they have to convince the heretics before they kill them, so that they never kill somebody who doesn't love Big Brother. And once he loves Big Brother, is thoroughly brainwashed. Then he is so obsessed with watching the news and knowing the troop movements, and 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 he thinks it's oh such great news when the troops win the battle in Africa. Or, Which wouldn't or even wouldn't even be the real troop movements. <laughs> right, right, right. But it just reminded me of of the way things work today. You know, you talk to people and they're like, "Oh, I'm a political junkie. I'm always watching CNN and MSNBC and and this and that, and I follow that really hardcore." Yeah, it's like what junkie. they're saying is is <laughs> I'm thoroughly engrossed in the indoctrination. It's I'm addicted really what to the indoctrination. I'm a news junkie. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. I used and to be a news that- junkie, even like well into being an anarchist, and now I'm like. The only time I read a paper is if I'm trapped somewhere like a doctor's office and yeah. I don't have a smartphone. Yeah. So, you know, um, yeah, I read some more interesting horizontal, uh, the, just those people. Um, there was an article <laughs> in the, there's an article in the Casper in the Red Star Tribune. It was a reprint uh-huh. from something like a year ago. It was a, it was an editorial about guns. And it was, I guess, being republished as a response to the, they're going to take our guns away. And it was before they passed the, it was about the concealed carry without a permit law that they passed, but it was before it and it was against it. And it was from, he's, he was like, I love guns. I hunt. I have guns, but I don't think people who can't pass a government background check, blah, blah, blah. And like he listed the people who shouldn't have guns. And one was like dope fiends, which to him is probably anybody on medical marijuana, even, you know, like. People who, mm-hmm. or, you know, and he's probably drunk while he's writing this. It sure sounded like it. But the end of it was like all exclamation, you know, all caps, all exclamation points. They're not going to take your guns. Go buy a gun. Enjoy being a good American. Salute the flag. Buy <laughs> guns. And he was really against gun shows, too. He said, huh. you know, people can buy guns without a, with about, without a background check. I mean, what's next? Drug shows? And I was thinking, Why like, not? dude, you're not making a cogent argument to me at no, gun no. shows by saying, you know, and I'm thinking about drug shows. It probably wouldn't just be weed and smack and acid and hash and grass. It'd probably be like, you know, flu meds. So you don't have to go wait. Like I'm going to go mm-hmm. today and, you know, spend three hours at the doc at the urgent care yep. waiting to get some flu meds that you can buy over the counter in Mexico or, or bulk antibiotics. So you can stock up if you're a yeah. prepper, you know, yeah, or bulk, uh, you know, like. Think about people who are preppers who like are either diabetic or um, you know like insulin dependent or thyroid medicine dependent. Like they can't really stock up, right? You know, yeah, they're, exactly. they're dependent. That, that, or that's a damn shame. You could probably buy like home flu tests. Like when when my wife went in the other day when she was sick, and now I've got what she's got, which is really why I'm leaving early. So or, you know, I shouldn't say that because it basically the government flu that they're slipping into my whatever is, is <laughs> it worked? It worked. They know it. You got a drug. We got a drug. We're gonna try it out on you. It won't make you die. It'll just get you a little bit sick. <laughs> a little bit Can't sick. Sing. Try to sing a dead Kennedy song. <laughs> Slip it abroad. Keep slowing up the USSR. But meanwhile, we keep an eye on what it's doing to you. Got a head cold. Got a chest cold. And it's three days old. Going on forever. Make you hazy. Make you lazy. Drive you crazy. For days and days and days and days and days and years. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and my wow. wife, my wife got it from the government. She actually, she's pretty sure she got it. Uh, at <laughs> she had to go into a government building to like file. Yeah, uh-huh. at court. Yeah, like she, you know, <laughs> nobody sick has come into her office. She hasn't had any contact with people, but like some of the, there were some sick people at court. Yeah. You know? oh, so yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it is government flu. But yeah, anyway. well, there were, so um, you know, you'd have got the drug, drug show. The drug show would uh-huh. sell government you know, like home home flu tests. You know. There you go. There you go. <laughs> there was a, a pot farmer's market in Seattle when I lived in Washington State. Oh, nice. and it, was, it, was, it was kind of a little news item, too. Um, and it was because, you know, it's kind of controversial. It's like, oh, my God. But uh, the, the funny thing was um, is I think there's some kind of restriction on, on – profit or or selling pot um so what they had to do is they, they accepted donations or trades for pot <laughs> yeah. to get around it trade your ak for pot yeah yeah because for some reason the state in washington state is very anti-profit they should like, try that in california they should try uh you know gun quote-unquote buyback where they give you weed see how that works <laughs>
Might work. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like oh, so Ocean says they'll just take it back from me. Ain't that some hustler shit? Do you know Young Calio, rapper named Young Calio? Uh uh-uh. uh. But we'll talk about him in just okay. a bit. He's good. He's in Treme. I don't know if he's real or not, but the guy called that. He's named after the projects there. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Would you like to advertise your product or service to a large, built-in audience of liberty-loving consumers who truly dig the free market? Freedom Fiends is now selling ad space. Slots are reasonably priced, but limited, so contact us today. Write the Fiends at TalkBack at FreedomFiends.com. That's TalkBack at FreedomFiends.com. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. Your house is your property. Nima Vidati. What's up? The right honorable Nima Vidati. That's me. This is uh, Sir Michael Wareham Dean. Good day to you, sir. Yes. I hope everything's well. So the Senate has extended warrantless wiretapping under FISA. I don't even know what FISA is, man. Um, it has to do with foreign agents and how you can get a, a warrant to wiretap them, basically. I think it stands for... No, I forget. It's foreign something That's something. That's boring, man. That is so boring and square. F those guys. So we did a uh, a good tutorial. I did a good tutorial and had some some, some fiends vet it on how to do encrypted yeah. off the record instant messaging with Pigeon, which is um even better than PGP email. People should check that out on the fiends blog. And um it's what the real hardcore uh leave me aloneers use. Uh they don't even use email. Like that's what Bradley Manning was using but the thing is the guy on the other end outed him and like you know logged him when he wasn't supposed to but if you're Mm -hmm. using it with someone you trust and you're both not logging it's like there's no record of it man it's gone it's just in your head as soon as you close it whereas with encrypted email if they get your passkey they can read what you saved or sent yeah 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 so definitely um, pimp that pigeon baby that's what we'd like to do because pigeon Pigeon. Mm, yeah, yum, yum. I actually had uh, an email chat with Ian Goldberg, the cypherpunk who invented the off-the-record Pigeon plugin. He looked at the tutorial, the tutorial, offered a few corrections. I made him. He liked it. And uh, I, nice. I think that's kind of like having a prayer vetted by the Pope if you're a Catholic. <laughs> he liked my, yeah. Which is, no, you know, no. which, which is uh, kind of indicative of like fiend sourcing and, you know, like crowdsourcing. Like I used to write books on tech with tech tutorials in them for a living and i had the company assigned one proofreader for spell spelling errors and stuff and one tech editor but they didn't find everything and having like right. eight people doing both finds everything right right well isn't that my um who was the other co-inventor of linux GNU that wasn't richard stallman that was kind of libertarian what was his name eric eric uh, s raymond Eric S. He's kind of, he's full on anarcho capitalist, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, in your anarchy gumbo with him, he was saying that, you know, they found out as um, software developers that that was the best way to get your software to work perfectly, or not perfectly. Yeah, I think it was, uh, I think it's something called like publish early, fix often, or something like that. Right. Right, right. And and keeping it to where anybody can go in and find, search for problems and uh, propose a fix or add a fix. I mean, isn't that so much more efficient for uh, creating a good final product than anything else, any other planned or centrally planned system that you can think of? Yeah. And I asked him, isn't that what Microsoft does? I mean, Steve Ballmer of Microsoft said, nothing from Microsoft works till version 3.0. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and he said, no, it's completely different because they sell you the version 1.0 and it sucks right. and it breaks and you know yeah and you're not really voluntarily i guess you are doing their tech support but you know it's people that don't even know why it's broken or what what it's opening them up to whereas the people that vet code because they like to uh you know are people who know what they're doing and are willing to do it and are willing to submit bug reports rather than just letting 
Microsoft mm-hmm. send your information in yeah. without you even right. knowing it. Well, it's a great uh, it's a great way to look at that principle of of why things shouldn't be monopolized in plans, especially when when it comes to intellectual property. Because if you open an idea up to the world or you open a technology up to the world, you're going to have seven billion potential people who could fix it, who could work on it, as opposed yeah. to a smaller amount. So why not open that up to as many people as possible? Um, I was watching South Park, and they, they did a new episode about Obama winning the most recent election. You know, It wasn't the one from four years ago. It was a new one called Obama Wins. Um, and it's really convoluted. And in essence, um, Cartman helps to steal the election so that the Chinese can get the rights to Star Wars instead of <laughs> Disney having the rights to Star Wars. Not, not the technology Star Wars, but the actual film franchise Star Wars. Like the um, Chinese care about intellectual property rights unless it's protecting (laughs) their own well it was it was like the chinese want to uh to keep disney from ruining star wars Uh, um and i was thinking you know people complain about that they complain about like the new ones that george lucas made like the supposed prequels and how much they sucked and how it's just been ruined and i was thinking well if if the concept, if the universe, if Star Wars were really open up to anybody, you know, not just fan art, but but people to actually make something and spend a lot of money on it and still release it as part of the Star Wars universe or an alternate take on the story, uh, I think you would end up with a lot of crap, but you would have a lot of amazing <laughs> things. Maybe things that would be better than George Lucas's vision of Well, you know, one of the first things I ever did when I learned to edit video on a computer was, what's the Star Wars with Jar Jar Banks in it? Uh, yeah, uh, um, episode one. I think. Yeah, I got like a bad rip of that or something and ported it to my computer and literally just cut out every scene with Jar Jar Banks. <laughs> the movie was 20 <laughs> minutes shorter. It was way better and it didn't nice. miss anything. Nice, nice. Yeah, I didn't exactly, release it. Exactly. You know, I didn't re- I didn't, right. didn't release it. I just watched it myself with a friend. Right, right. And it was that's open source. That's open source. Yeah. But if you were if you were to try to, um, you know, put that out, and give it world, away, you, I'd get arrested. You would. You could risk uh, uh, some certain IP problems. You could get a lawyer letter. You could have the goons get involved. Yeah. When about 98% of hardcore Star Wars fans would agree with me that that was a, a worthwhile edit. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, you know. So I, guess, I guess my point is is that same thing, that same principle that works to make software, software better when it's open source, it works with anything uh, yeah. that I can think of. And, you know, I still can't understand why – Richard Stallman, the guy who co-invented Linux, GNU slash Linux, sorry, um, you know, that neckbeard socialist, as uh, my friend Jeff <laughs> called him. I love that term. Neckbeard socialist. It's hilarious, but why, why neckbeard? Because he, neck neck he has a neckbeard. Because he has a neckbeard. Because he has a neckbeard, and he's a socialist. And I don't, mm. and it's a great term, man. It should be used on everybody at college, pretty much. It's a lot of people. <laughs> Whereas I prefer bearded anarchists like you and Ben yes. Stone. Yes. So, but I can't understand... And I've been through this before, but it's just come back because people keep asking me, like, why don't you interview Stallman? And I'm like, okay, here's my email exchange with him where he said, go jump in a lake Uh, (laughs) because I wouldn't release everything non MP3 as Vogue Orbis OGG files from now. Like, basically, he was saying, if you want the glory of interviewing the master, you will change your entire business model forever. You know, like you will jump through more hoops every week. So. Right. No, F that guy. No. But um, I can't so understand. Put everything out in a format that most people can't listen to. That'd be retarded. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. MP3. It'd be, it'd be like if a TV started broadcasting in shortwave radio yeah. or something. Yeah. Because it's purer. Yeah. I mean, I can understand him. And, you know, God bless him for sticking to his guns. I mean, he basically sticks to his guns like an anarchist sticks to his guns when talking to a minarchist. But it kind of puts him in a little room that nobody wants to be in. Yeah, yeah. Apparently. And even bigger than that, even bigger than that, I cannot understand. He's a leftist. I mean, literally, he is a statist and a leftist, and he wants government to fix everything, um, which, okay, he doesn't like Obama, so he's smart because because he's very uh, – Stallman is very anti-war, so good for him mm-hmm. for not loving Obama. Yeah. But yeah. he still – you know, he wants like someone like uh, – who was the Arab? The Arab? Ralph Nader. Yeah, who wants to ban guns now, but <laughs> ran under saying he'd regulate them like cars. Uh, Does yeah, he say he he wants to ban? Has he? Come yeah, out he wants to ban them now. Sandy Hook. But when he was running oh, for president, he's like, "Well, they should be logically, you know, it should be like getting a car license. You have to take a test and you have to sign up." Um, but now he's saying they should just be outlawed. But anyway, you know, Stallman is more like that kind of leftist. But 
how is Stallman a statist when he literally, you know, in his dorm room created something that changed the world that millions of people use that was built entirely by the free market that proves why you don't need government or central planning? You know, how can you create Linux and then say, oh, but we need the government for the important things? I don't well, get it's, it, man. It, it, it's like Ben says, is it's it's a religion, and some people still have certain sacred cows and altars that they still cling to. They can get it piecemeal sometimes. Like like I have somebody I've been debating with on Facebook, and she's always posting things about you know get government hands out of my uterus and off of my vagina and things like that. Yeah. But uh, but she wants to take my guns away. So for some reason. Um, when you don't have something coming from first principles, you can sort of take piecemeal things. And like we said from the very beginning in Guns and Weed, freedom is one thing, people. So we'll come back with more on that same thread here in a bit. Yeah, worms. To your mother and her wonderful Christmas gifts to me. Yay. Yay. I just turned my treble up. Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes and DVDs to help keep us drone-proof. There's a Torrent Club link at the top of FreedomFiends.com. There you'll find our Torrent RSS feed and instructions to grab past episodes and automatically download new ones, even while you're away from the computer. You'll also get special episodes of The Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo days or even weeks before regular podcast subscribers who aren't torrenting. Leave your computer on, seating the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seating The Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. We're not saying the Freedom Fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to The Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money. You've read books, attended lectures, and you know the Constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire. But there's still one thing missing. Buttons! Freedom Fiends now has buttons. We have Freedom Fiends, Anarchy Gumbo, and two designs for Guns and Weed the Road to Freedom. Wear them with pride. Use them to start conversations with statists. It's only $6 for four buttons, including shipping. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the link at the top that says Buttons. Live Sunday show. It is a call-in show, although we have not given out the number yet. But uh, now would be a good time, or at least sometime soon. Um, you can call us at 307-215-5171. Again, that number is 307-215-5171. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I want to talk about uh, a logical inconsistency I found in a Dead Kennedy song. Imagine that. Okay, what is it? A punk rocker who didn't totally understand politics, but thinks he does. <laughs> well, when I was I was listening to some Dead Kennedys the other day, and uh, there's a line in the song "Stars and Stripes of Corruption," a great okay. scathing indictment of the United States and everything that's wrong with it, and everything Jello thinks should be changed. It's got two lines right very near each other. One is, "We've got to rise above the need for cops and laws." I totally agree. About four lines later, it says, budget's in the red, let's tax religion. Now, how's that going to work without <laughs> goons, cops, and laws? Well, maybe he's saying it sarcastically as a joke. Like, no, well, no. you tax us, let's tax, you know, the religious right. No, he's, he's said on many occasions that he wants to tax religion. Why? Why? That, How's that going to work like, without guns and cops and goons, which he's complaining not, about? It, it's and not going to work. Well, people don't get that. No, nobody seems to get that. And I, I keep, we keep trying to show people that that's the only way political power happens. And whenever you say there ought to be a law saying this, or whenever you say, well, we, you know, that, that royal we, that socialist collectivist we, we need to just make sure everybody passes this cer- certain background check, or we just need to do this. All and we really need to get saying, rid of cops, too. Right. Yeah. All you're really saying is, is I want some people who have lots of gun training and lots of guns, bigger, better, 
more powerful guns than everybody else to point those guns at people who don't do what I want them to do. And they're specious about it. I mean, there's a lot of leftists crying for a national conversation on guns now. They don't want a conversation. They want no, no. them telling us we're going to take your guns and us saying, right. okay, yes, sir. Right, right. Which is kind of the yeah. other day I said, I said that I lost my guns in a, a boating accident. Sean thought I said a voting accident. <laughs> people Great. did lose their, people are losing their guns in a voting accident. Basically because for, you know, 200 years, people have been voting and being think, thinking that representation is good and yeah. that it's moral and that the people will even do what they say they're going to do, which are all incorrect. So right. y'all, if y'all lose your guns, it's from a voting accident. <laughs> That's great. I love that. A voting accident. Uh, yeah, man. Um, I, I guess people just don't get it and I'd like them to get it. And when, when lefties say a national conversation, it reminds me of, of when your mom or dad says, we, we need, need to, to have a talk. Yeah. You know, and then they sit you down and tell you how it's going to be. The last that, time, that's, that's what they mean. The last time my parents did that was like, they hadn't been in the same room in like two or three years. They were divorced and not speaking. Mm -hmm. And I walked in and they were both in the living room. And it was, it was, they were about to tell me I got kicked out of boarding school. <laughs> for calling the headmaster a fat, bald, overly Christian old fart. Yeah, yeah. And you were like, awesome. Yeah. I hated that place anyway. <laughs> Ooh, I like this idea for a button. I voted my guns away. <laughs> Although Romney would have done the same thing. Vot voting couldn't have helped you. It well, yeah. only hurt you in that sense. I get it, but it wouldn't really be clear to most people. It would sound like, you know, I voted for Obama or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I get well, it. Well, it's, it's, it's like you tell people... People with guns for everyone, they're like, oh, so the alternative is we give a gun to everyone? Why don't we just give them nukes, too? They still well, have that we stuck in their head. Like, like if you're, if you're pro-gun, then you want the government to issue everyone a gun and pay for it with tax money. I really like the comment on uh, the Guns for Everyone video you made, uh, which has almost 4,000 hits. And we earned those. Like, I've never had anything go viral that I've been involved with. It's like everything I've got, like 4,000 doesn't sound like a lot, but we earned those. We suffered for each of those. It, you know, nobody blogged it and it just went viral overnight. It's like it took like 10 days of hammering away at people and like and making something great. But yeah, yeah. somebody said somebody whose name was like Mega God Save the Queen, which sounds like <laughs> uber British status said, this is funny because most Yanks agree. You know, like that's the English view of the Guns for Everyone video. Like. Of course, these stupid Yanks make something like this. They all think this. Yeah, yeah. I I don't understand they how don't, though. how Brits think the opposite. I don't I don't understand especially how Yanks. People... I mean, Yanks to them means Americans. Yanks to me means Northerners. Yeah, Yankees. Those Yankees, damn Yankees don't want a gun for everyone. Chicago, was, New York. I, I was gonna look this. Up. I was wondering about the etymology of Yankees. Like, was that a self-described thing that Northern people called themselves? I think or it was actually, it a derogatory term that Southerners called Northerners. I think uh, it came the from Aggression. the song "Yankee Doodle Dandy," which was making fun of Northerners. Was it making fun? I th oh, I thought it was Northerners singing it themselves, and they're just that gay. No offense, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Northerners aren't gay. But um, let's see, Yankee etymology. The term Yankee, um, meaning of Yankee is varied over it's time. It's from a know. Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court, published in 1889. Although before that, the British people applied the term to any person from what became the U.S. And in the 19th century, Americans, anyway, who cares? F those people. I don't know. It was just interesting to Brits. me. F those Brits. Not F the Yankees. F the Brits. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Canadians are more status than the Brits, says someone who's probably in Canada on our chat room. Yeah, I don't know, man. They're all status to me. And, and We I have a lot of fans in Canada. And uh, I actually talked to this guy the other day who's a Canadian married to an American woman living in America. And... He called me up and like wants to hire me to basically tell him how to do everything we do. And we talked for about <laughs> an hour and he's going to hire me after New Year's and yeah, he wants to do it for his church. And uh okay. You know, I said, "Well, I can send you examples of what we did and some things I wrote, but you're not going to like them. They're really like the government is horrible." And he's like he looked at him and he wrote back and he was like, "God bless you for speaking out and, you know, do it while you can cuz in in Canada you can't do this anymore." Which is probably why uh why we're so popular in Canada. 
Hmm. Okay. I could see that. Although Ed and Ethan do it really well in Canada. In there. Yeah. Although I guess they're in the northern wilderness in Saskatchewan. So maybe yes. that provides them some kind of buffer from the urban status who yes, would like they're, to have their heads up, on a pike. Their uplink is by shortwave radio and they put the <laughs> antenna dish on the roof of a reindeer that wanders around their yard, their many acres. Yeah. yeah their many yeah. hectares, I believe it is. <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe I'm just an optimist, but... Um, I, I don't know if they have – I don't think they have the political clout to really go after guns like they want to. And also I don't think uh, the statists have the political clout to go after speech the way well, they'd love well, to. Well, Canada either. had massive noncompliance with registration of long guns a few years ago, especially in yeah. the provinces that are like right above Montana, like you know the, the, the Wyoming's of Canada. Um, right, right. And that's a much more statist country where everyone's like, of course you have national health. Yeah, hey, yeah. hey, fella. Yeah. Hi, hey, buddy. I'm hey, not buddy. your guy, buddy. I'm not your buddy, guy. That kind of a thing. Take um, my gun. Take my gun, buddy. <laughs> but the the you know, I, I guess for some reason, and I don't know if it's just the culture there in Britain, but uh, they're infringing on speech. Uh, you know, ahead of the game, ahead of the state game, just like they did with guns. Uh, I mean, all the stories I see of somebody getting arrested for uh, a quote unquote heinous or racist. YouTube com- comment you, or you not can, sufficiently status yeah. YouTube comment has been in England. Yeah. In Canada, you can do that too, I believe. You can go to prison for making racist comments. Yeah. And maybe it's just because I don't end up s- scrolling through uh, Canadian newspapers, but it, it's usually in like the Daily Mail or the Guardian. They'll have a, a little bit about how somebody recently was on Facebook, usually a kid, you know, like a 19 year old or a 17 year old was doing what teenagers do and criticizing the status quo and they get thrown in prison and probably given some kind of quote unquote community service, uh, basically slavery, yeah. just just for voicing their opinion on Facebook. They're forced to hand out copies of the Canadian uh, Canadian equivalent of uh, of Cass Sunstein's book, Nudge, <laughs> which yeah. is probably called well, I'm saying, I'm saying Nudge. I, I usually see this in Britain, but but I could see it happening in Canada too. Well, someone Not just posted. Have. Someone just posted in the chat room. Uh, some of my Canadian Facebook friends were just railing about gun grabs and concentration camps for gun owners. <sighs> yeah. Good luck with that. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like using um, Molyneux's against me argument for this because maybe we're at the point where that's the only thing that's going to reach them and then probably not. But but tell these gun owners, well, would you would you look at me in the eye, you yourself, uh, Mr. whatever their name is, and, and point your guns at me saying that I can't buy a gun? Would you do that? And if, you know, if I resisted and tried to buy the gun anyway, would you throw me in a cage? And if I resisted the cage, would you shoot me with your gun? Mr. They'll go back. They'll go back. Backdoor methods. They're gonna. They're gonna go. They're gonna increase in America psychological testing and uh, what constitutes mentally unbalanced. And uh, actually, the new the DMS five is out. The DSM five, whatever it is, the Big Book of Crazy, uh-huh. uh, just came out. And I heard a podcast of someone talking about all the new ways that they define like not liking authority as mental illness. Although interestingly. Mm-hmm cannibalism is still not listed as a mental disorder so i guess being <laughs> being resistant to authority is worse than being a cannibal to the psychiatric Apparently. industrial that's, complex that's a really interesting topic we'll come back with more after the jump 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 like a bunny boop, 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 boop. Ugh, I'm so sick of looking at Steve's wedding pics, and I'm all out of passive-aggressive comments. What else am I supposed to do at work all day? Sick of stalking your ex on Facebook? Yeah! Are you all out of cute cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at? Duh! Freedom Fiends to the rescue! The Fiends now have a blog. Read all about the latest tyranny today. Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it! Have you swallowed too much of the state's poison? The Freedom Fiends will stick their fingers down your throat and hold your hair back while you hurl. Check out the new show, The Freedom Fiends Agenda, on Freedom Fiends Radio. Click on the blue Listen link at freedomfiends.com, streaming live every Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m. East Coast, U.S. time, on Freedom Fiends Radio at freedomfiends.com. The Freedom Fiends Agenda is Michael W. Dean and Nima Badati's fun and feisty chat about market anarchy, self-defense, real money, the digital police state, 
activism, DIY media, sex pets, and rock and roll. Call in soon before they get droned. Live studio number 307-215-5171 or via Skype to username kittyfeet1. Listen live at freedomfiends.com. That's freedomfiends.com. We're back here on the Freedom Fiends. This is Nima Vidati. We got Michael W. Dean over on the other end of the interwebs for the last hour. Michael will duck out a little bit early, though, and I'm probably going to talk about uh, Chuck Hagel, uh, Iran, with a few personal stories, and maybe do some glossary reading um, in between now and then, though. I think we're going to let Michael uh, go ahead and get his last bit of Phoenix out before he has to go and talk to the COINTELPRO agents. Right, Michael? Yeah, yeah. I have to go file my monthly report and get my... my <laughs> and- they pay me in gold. 20, 20 pieces <laughs> of, of silver. Of course they do. Yeah. Of course they do. Yes, and I, I, I prefer them gold eagles to that paper. Which which As- they'll confiscate from me later. But uh, <laughs> I want to talk about David Simon, the creator of The Wire and Treme. Treme is a great show. I've been watching it a lot. Yeah. Uh, I just watched the episode again last night where the character Harley gets shot in the face and killed on the street in a really fast mugging, uh, which is really disturbing for me because... A, I got mugged in New Orleans. B, I've hung out with Steve Earle, the guy who plays the actor, so I kind of feel like I know the character. C, Mm -hmm. you love the character by that point in the series. And it's like these two kids just run up, stick guns in their face, try to take their, you know, take their guitar and their violin and, uh, you know, are walking away with it. You know, all they're losing, all that Harley and the girl are losing is their instruments. And then Harley says, Son, you're making a big, you're making a bad decision. And the guy turns around, walks back, and says, "I'm not your son," and shoots him in the face. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, it's very it's, disturbing to watch. Did you very see it? Disturbing. You saw it? I, I saw that clip. I, I mean, I don't watch the show regularly, but uh, I saw yeah. that the clip of that scene, and uh, it's about as awful as you would imagine it is. Yeah, uh, or more awful, I guess. Yeah, I even wondered like if they both had guns and were trained, how it would have gone differently. Um, I can think of a way too: is if you had a gun in your pocket. That they couldn't see, and you just shot them without pulling it out. That might have given you some time, but uh, it was it was lightning yeah. fast and evil. They had the drop on them. I don't know what you do when you've got a gun point blank pointed at your face. Um, I don't know, man. I think if you've got it in your coat pocket and you shoot them in the hip or something, they're going to be in so much pain they're going to drop, and you're going to have time to shoot them again. Yeah, probably. Yeah, you know, and most Maybe. people like that. If one of them gets shot, the other one's going to run. He's not going to stick around. There's no you know honor among murderers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I do I was, think it's a societal problem that you'd have that kind of a situation happening, right? I yeah, mean, in, 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 in a society where most people were armed and used guns, you think these punk kids would have the balls to run up on anybody they saw like that? Well, I know um, that Wyoming has the highest level of uh, gun ownership. It's stated as sixty-two percent of households, but. You know, I don't. I don't know what that comes from. That was in that article in the Casper Star Nanny Tribune, uh, Red Star mm-hmm. Tribune. But, and I think that probably comes from FBI statistics, which comes from background checks. And uh, ah, right. but whenever you know, whenever you go to buy your gun, and they do the the thing where you have to wait, and they call in, and all that. Kind yeah, of stuff. I'm sure it's higher than that because I'm sure there are a lot of people in Wyoming who. No one knows they own a gun. They go to a gun show and buy it. They don't do a background yep. check. They don't have a concealed yep. carry permit. Uh, they don't talk about it. They're not on Facebook. They're old cowboys and like, or they've just right. inherited it from their grandpa. You know, I think it's mm-hmm. way higher than 62%. But so the, you know, we're a very armed, we're the most armed state per capita, regardless of how you slice it. And that stuff never happens here. The only, in the three years I've been here, the only home invasions I've heard of, there was one of some old couple. Uh, I think if they'd had a gun, it would have gone differently. All the other mm-hmm. ones I've heard of, the four or five other ones I've heard of, have been like one drug dealer robbing another drug dealer that they knew, yeah. probably because they got ripped off. Right. Yeah, there there was one I actually covered uh, when I was a reporter in Casper that was exactly that. It was a guy that got shot in his driveway, uh, and it was a botched robbery that these, these other drug dealers were uh, allegedly robbing him to get his pot. And um, it just went down bad, and one of them got shot and, and died. Uh, and again, that's a direct result of 
What the drug war? That was really near to, to your with inanimate objects. But. That was really near to your old house, wasn't it? That one? Yeah, it was. It was near where I lived, and it was one of the things that precipitated me actually uh, giving me that final push to go get my own uh, piece of protection, um, yeah. which the state was again blocking me from doing. You know, I I, I felt kind of nervous. I was there at the scene of the crime all day, and I didn't want somebody watching the news or or you know casing the joint, and being like, oh, there's. I mean, I don't know if that that happened. Yeah, they might have thought you. Trouble, you they, if they get arrested, they might have been like, "Oh, that's the guy that turned me in," or something. You know? But but yeah, exactly. Because I've seen him around the neighborhood. Of- you know, maybe he witnessed it or something. And, and I guess I, what I'm saying is, I don't care how fantastical that was or how far fetched. All that matters is my human desires and alleviating them or providing for them. If I feel very paranoid and have trouble sleeping at night and going down to the local liquor and gun shop and getting a high point for a <laughs> hundred bucks would make me feel better. Uh, there's nobody who has a moral right to tell me I can't do that. But the state did indeed do that. They, they did not like that I had a Texas driver's license. And so I had to go wait at the DMV to get a Wyoming ID card. Before Actually, you mentioned High Point. Um, that is the weapon that Harley is shot with. There's later, a, you know, oh, the really? cops, of course, the cops show up later and take pictures and, you know, pick up shell casings and they never find the guy, but they're like, yeah, it was a High Point 380. Mm. So, yep, mm. it was a, a, a ghetto gun. No, it was a gun <sighs> that only that rich people don't need, that poor people need to protect themselves. But exactly. So I, saw, I saw an interview on uh, on YouTube it was Reason Magazine interviewing David Simon, the creator of Treme and The Wire, oh. which is, first of all, it's like it was Nick Gillespie interviewing him. First of all, it's like Nick Gillespie, who is a what you call a beltway libertarian. He's never even returned our emails of, hey, you should check out our guns and weed movie. But he goes mm-hmm. and interviews this Hollywood guy that's a total Obama humper because he likes his stuff and he's famous. OK, what kind of libertarian yeah. is that? F that guy, Nick Gillespie. Well, you know what kind of libertarian that is. That's the, that's the kind of dinner party beltway libertarian that, that wants to be cosmopolitan. And that's going to lose his guns in a voting accident, <laughs> although he probably doesn't have guns. He's in D.C. He doesn't have guns. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, any kind of principled things that made you go, oh, OK, uh, about David Simon? Unprincipled things. Total really? inconsistencies. Yeah. Um, yeah. David Simon is extremely against the drug war and both of his banner shows, The Wire and Treme, um, just show how wrong the drug war is and how it just leads mm-hmm. to violence and horror. Um, right. But he still voted for Obama. He said he was going to vote for him again. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and Obama loved, says he loves the show The Wire. It's his favorite show. And Eric Holder said it's his favorite show, which is probably because it's a bunch of fed goons wiring guys from the, the hood and <laughs> making them narc on people not yeah. because it shows the horror of it they it they is, cheer for the, the feds i'm sure right but, uh, of course they do you know david simon they were they were talking he was talking with nick gillespie about like david simon said one of the great failures of democracy is the failure of the hometown newspaper of how they've all been bought up by these conglomerates who push some party line you know probably uh corporate party line and yeah I'll buy that. But he almost sounded like he was going to say, and I think the government should bail them out. But he was saying like, Mm -hmm. you know, I used to work at the LA times and and there were 120 reporters there now. And now there's like 30, you know, and that it doesn't give you enough people to to cover everything that's happening to keep an eye on everything. And, uh, you know, (laughs) I'm thinking like, so there's less people pushing the status line was my immediate thought. But Nick Gillespie's <laughs> comment was, well, you know, papers like the LA Times, I mean, basically they push LA. They make LA look good. And Dave, David Simon interrupted him and he's like, what, are you saying there's some agenda here? I don't even want to go there. Why are you even bringing that up? You, you libertarians always have an agenda. And, and, he, and he said, huh. do you think there's an agenda in the LA Times, you know, for some party or some other party? And Nick Gillespie said, no, I just think their only agenda is LA. And I'm like, Really? Because every newspaper I pick up anywhere, it's almost like the words go blurry and then transform into the same thing over and over and over. And it just says, <laughs> the state did something horrible. People complained, but the state did it anyway, and it was good for you. I see that paragraph yeah. over and over and over in everything I read in every yeah. paper. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if agenda is the right word for it, though. Um, maybe it is. I- 
I just feel like it's 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 the culture. That's the aesthetic. That's 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 the genre. You know how you talk about certain things in certain genres, like in hip hop or rap, you talk about selling drugs and fucking bitches. Well, in the genre of mainstream media, you talk about how the state is great. If you don't talk about that, then you're not part of the mainstream genre. You're something else. You're alt media. And maybe um, I view everything with an agenda because I watch Treme and it is a huge like proof to it's it's very closely based on real events and it's a huge like example for me of why Democrats and Republicans screw everything up and it can't be fixed because the real two anti-heroes in the Treme universe are George W. Bush and Ray Nagin, like the top Republican ah. and one of the top Democrats at the time, mm -hmm. you know, and they're both being horrible and screwing everything up. And New Orleans has the highest incarceration rate of any city in the world. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Their no. whole economy is based on arresting people for nanny crap. Wow. But they can't wow. stop the murders, you know, and it has a high murder rate. And my yeah. friend got like murdered one the, there. One of the highest. Aren't they, aren't they always bouncing back and forth between them and Chicago for the yeah. most murder city? Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll be back. What does freedom mean? Tune in to LRN.FM to find out. LRN.FM is the Liberty Radio Network, a collection of live talk radio and podcasts, all coming from a principled pro-liberty perspective. LRN.FM show hosts aren't left, right, or conspiracy kooks. You can tune in 24-7 to LRN.FM via your phone, computer, satellite, and more. Listen free anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. If you like tranny hookers and shooting crocodile, tune in to FreedomFiends.com. Love the fiends and want to help out? We do take donations and we put them back into our Liberty Projects. You can make a donation by clicking on the spinning coin on any post. But what if you want to help but you ain't got no cash? Or you made a donation and you want to help more? Here's how you can help. Download and seed our torrents to help keep us drone proof. There's a torrent club link at the top of freedomfiends.com. You can also blog the fiends and share episode links on Facebook, Twitter, and elsewhere. You can rate and review our movies on Amazon. On and IMDb, you can rate and review the Freedom Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo and our songs on iTunes. That really helps a lot. You can buy our movies and share them with friends or give them out as gifts. And one of the best ways to spread liberty is to buy a bunch of Freedom Fiends buttons and give them out as gifts. Wholesale prices are available, and you can also comment on our site or better yet, comment about us on other sites. And please email the site link to all your friends. Thanks for helping spread the Fiends message worldwide. To to as many liberty people as you can, especially to those who don't yet get it. You rock. Michael I'll W. Dean, I love you. You've never said that to me. I just said it just now. You can't say that anymore. Okay, that statement well, you, you just said was false. During the break, I I was, we were kind of yelling now. at each other, and I was like, <laughs> I said, I love you, man. And you said, I love you, too. And I said, you've never said that. And you're like, yeah, I have. And I'm like, no, you haven't. You've, you've said things that mean that, but you've never said it. And you said, well, I've said it back to you after you said it to me. And I'm like, nope, I've been waiting. You never said it. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because I say I love the fiends all the time. Like, I love our fans. I love you for listening. I say that to, to, to the but generic never people to out me. there in the world. Wow. <laughs> and then I'm you sorry. said it. And then you said it to me again. And what did I say to you? You said that I've never said it. No, I said, oh, you I said, said you no. homo. I said you're a homo. Right, right. Yo homo instead of no homo. Yeah. That's what you say if you're a Hispanic homo. YOLO TANGO HOMO. Yo, yo homo. Yeah. muy bueno. So this is my last bit here before I duck out to go uh, to the COINTELPRO office and get my check in silver. Yes. I want yes. to talk about FEMA guillotines. Guillotines. All right. Um, did you know that the term capital punishment is from the Latin capitalis, which means regarding the head, and capital uh -huh. punishment means execution uh, by beheading. Ugh. Yikes. Yeah. Okay. okay. And guillotines, well, it makes sense. I guess I shouldn't say yikes at the history of a word, but okay. Guillotines were used in Nazi Germany to kill dissidents, even ones that weren't shooting soldiers, that were just intellectual ones like pamphleteers. There's this group huh. called the White Rose. The White Rose was a nonviolent intellectual resistance yeah. group yeah. of universities, of students from the University of Munich and right. their philosophy professor. Talk about like balls, you know, back when, when when political activism could lose your head instead of just, I'm going to vote, vote at you. Um, gonna they left, vote at you. <laughs> they were known for anonymous leafleting and graffiti campaign from 42 to 43. Ah, they okay. called for active opposition to Adolf Hitler's regime and they were caught and they were 
publicly executed by guillotine. Wow. Wow. For doing, for doing counter propaganda and peace art. Basically yeah. the, the historical equivalent of what we're doing now. Yeah. Probably not even, you know, or more or less. Yeah. 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 No, it's of the same kind, a different genre, yeah. I guess. <laughs> and, and I was listening, I was listening to a recent cast where you were talking about the, uh, the guy that got droned and then they droned his son, Alalaki. Yeah. And you were like, you know, his son did nothing except be related to the guy. And the father did nothing. He said some bad stuff, but he did nothing other than like yell at the government on the internet when you said of yourself, which is what I do all day long. Well, I you guess say, we don't, I, I don't know what the man did, but I know that they never indicted him. They never called, charged yeah, him with any He called any for crime. violence. You don't call for violence, but it was right. a really good interview, man. I listened to your uh, interview on the gumbo this week, which is a rebroadcast of. Ah, yes. yes. Your, I listened to the whole thing, man. It was great. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun to do too. Um, but when I br- brought up the Al Alaki example, um, apparently there's a show called Homeland that did a, a fictional account of it. I'm guessing it was. I talked about Homeland. By that. I was like, I was embarrassed to like it. It was really good. Really, really. Um, Claire Danes plays a Fed. Oh, I hate Claire Danes. Oh, but at least she plays a Fed, so I can hate her. Yay. Yeah. Instead of playing an uh, abused wife, so you have to feel sorry for her like in that creature movie. <laughs> should I should I watch Homeland? It seems like uh who else watches it? Um Silver Stacks. Um nah, is on the, nah, on the you Houston should watch Treme, it. man. I'm eating watch Treme. I'm stealing food from the fiends. Stealing food from the fiends. You have a right to that fiend food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Um Okay, okay. I think well, I coughed Treme out a piece is. of my lung, man. Oh, nice. Was it a big piece, little piece? Little. <laughs> I think it was just wet oh. food, but um, yeah, you got okay. some. Mm. I was gonna say, apparently, um, I won today's Rebel Mad Lib raffle, but stay tuned. We'll have another. I think you should win too, though, because uh, you what are you talking about, man? I was gonna explain it if you would let me explain. No, it. explain it. No, explain it. I don't know which. I still want to talk about now. FEMA guillotines, and then I'm okay. Out of here. We'll, we'll drop it. I'll leave it on my. I'll have time on my own. So <laughs> Alex uh, Jones. Alex guillotines. Jones has a theory or a conspiracy theory that FEMA has built a bunch of guillotines for when they need to line up dissidents and off with their heads. And there's a. Really? They show a FEMA guillotine and someone being dragged to it in the trailer for Gray State movie. It's pretty awesome. Hmm. I don't know if I FEMA buy that, guillotines. man. FEMA guillotines? Would they really do that? Yeah, like, I think FEMA's- I guess, I guess for, the, for the scary wow factor, but it seems like that'd be kind of... I mean, they, they have all the guns. Why would they need to... FEMA's, FEMA's goal is to bore you to death, man. They really, it really is. Mm. It, mm. They're so boring. They're so statist. They're, and they're, <laughs> they're the other enemy in, in, uh, in Treme. And there's graffiti ah. in the opening credits that says, FEMA, fix everything my ass. <laughs> well, you I'm know, glad that FEMA is is the enemy. So, so and everyone's how can a guy waiting make on their media f- like this, where the enemies are FEMA, Ray Nagin, and George W. Bush, and, and think still voting is good. Yeah, yeah, I don't get that. Don't yeah, get and that, how man. can how can Nick Cassava or Nick uh, Gillespie? You know, one of the like when you look up libertarian, he's like one of the top ten names that comes up. How can he mm. agree with this guy in an interview? Yeah, there's. After he just said news, the LA Times has an agenda and it's LA, which would make sense. I mean, you know, I mean, wouldn't the Gold Weekly talk about gold? The LA Times is going to talk about LA, but you well, know, well, when you when you sit in mainstream local news stations nowadays, that's that's how they tell people that what you're doing is still viable. Don't change careers because we'll always have the lock on the local market. I mean, I had several meetings where that was the gist of it. That that corporate or were you trying to quit the and they didn't want you to, <laughs> and they you had to sue them <laughs> no, almost to quit. Well, well, you but had they to get were, a lawyer to quit. Right, right. But this wasn't specific to me. This was just in meetings talking to everybody like like what we do is still important because it's still local and we're the only people who who cover the local news. I really um, like so the name of the uh the the germs biopic. What we do is secret. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But it um, is. Yeah, FEMA guillotines. They're not after your guns. Go buy guns. Worship the flag. I mean, um say the pledge of allegiance. It's all good. There's no FEMA guillotines. <laughs> yeah, that just seems kind of unwieldy. Uh, and unless worms, they were like some kind of fancy guillotines. And but, worms um, can turn metal into semiconductors. What was it? There was like a handheld guillotine in some ancient hey, I'm, Asian I'm pod. Be- I guess I'm pod beefing with Nick Gillespie, huh? Haven't had a good pod beef in a while. I, I don't know if he has a pod to for you to beef with. Oh, but you can pod with anybody. Pod is, is one, you, you one media person yelling at another media person on their own media. 
Okay, okay. Well, we'll get to more of that in the glossary <laughs> coming up soon. Um, so you got anything else before you duck out for this? I was going to say stuff, but uh, you should have the last two minutes or so to uh, say things. Did you read this thing about worms turn metal into semiconductors? Yeah, I thought it was like a natural thing, but apparently it's people can use worms to Yeah, turn you have to poison them. Basically, you give them cadmium or cadmium, which is a heavy metal that's more poisonous than lead. So you poison the worms and they poop out little <laughs> dots that can be used to make semiconductors. <laughs> worms. Lydia said that. Yeah. Yes, yes. Worms. People are very excited about worms. I love this this connection how worms has just sort of grown into this thing about the fiends this now. This beast. I know. Yes. Yes. Yeah, David Emmergluck, if anyone knows him should pass that on to him. I don't he doesn't write well, it's, it's it's so out of his, it's so out of his hands now though cuz he he like seeded the worm idea in your brain and for some reason the worms were still in your brain by the time you met me and you you told me about it and I was like yeah whatever I'm still going to say yeah. worm. He said it like once. He said it the fiends. He said it like once to me thing. in 1996 and uh oh, it okay. like it it was dormant like a nematode in my brain for yes. 15 yes. 20 years and then anarchic out. order that's how the worms spread. There was no plan for the worms. I repeat, no plan for the worms. 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 All right. Michael's going to duck out. When we come back, I'll have some talk about uh, Iran, Chuck Hagel, and maybe some glossary reading uh, for two more segments. You can't call in, though, because Michael will turn off his Skype computer. But thanks, Fiends. Thank you. Later, Fiends. So, uh, Nima apparently did a great show. I've gotten several emails about it without me, but of course he forgot to press record after I told him four times. So, yeah. And my trip to the doctor, um, I got there. I was the last appointment of the day. Nima's calling me. <clears throat> I'm going to call you back. And, uh, yeah, I yeah, was the last point of the day. Doctor bitched at me for being a cigarette smoker, bitched at me for not having got a flu shot this year, bitched at me saying I was trying to tell her how to do her job because I said, uh, you know, when she started asking me, like, what do you do for a living? And, you know, what do you what are your symptoms? You know, I like just told him all to the nurse. And I was like, uh, I have the same thing my wife had. She was in here two days ago. She has bronchitis. And the doctor's like, don't tell me how to do your, my job. Everyone's been doing that all day. And she was like, I'm going to give you antibiotics, even though. You're, you have something viral. I can tell by looking at you. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so <laughs> I said, well, I'm not telling you I need antibiotics. And she's like, yeah, you are. She wrote me a prescription. It was $138 because I don't have insurance. Uh, they didn't have the cough medicine at the drugstore, so I have to find out tomorrow if I can get it in another store. I got my antibiotics, started taking them. Supposed to give me a metallic taste in my mouth. We and then on the way home, I saw a cop proning a guy out to like eight cops in four cop cars proning a guy out on the street on the side of uh, on the side of Second Street. Yeah, that happened. I've never seen that here. You see it all the time in L.A. and San Francisco. Never seen it here, but I don't get out a lot. Nima says it's because uh, there's less tyranny in my house. And, you know, we've never discussed that, but that's why I don't get out a lot because uh, home is where the rights are. Home is where there's less tyranny. And I like it. So I'm going to go watch more Treme and uh, wait until I can go get some cough medicine tomorrow. Take some over-the-counter crap in the meantime. NyQuil, bitches. Freedom Fiends, bitches. All right. There should be drug shows. Then you wouldn't have to go to stupid doctors who yell at you. All right. Take care. Worms. Worms and pharmaceuticals. Oh, my. I fucking take, hate, hate taking medicine. Hate it. Hate it. I uh, hate dealing with the Dr. Industrial Complex. Okay, I'm done ranting. All right, love to my worms. Take care, y'all. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com.
makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com.